the abdominal cavity can be an interesting area for palpation because it does not have as easily felt of skeletal landmarks like the other regions of the body that we've looked at. Here, we're going to have a anterior wall formed by muscles and soft tissue structures. So we need to rely a lot on visual cues from the thoracic region or inferiorly along the pelvic region to help with orientation of where things would lie in the abdominal cavity. To further complicate things, not everybody is as thin as our model represented here. So there can be a large layer of subcutaneous tissue or fat that is going to accumulate in the abdominal region, often complicating palpation. So let's begin by looking at a couple landmarks that are there for everybody. Beginning with the belly button, or the umbilicus, sometimes called the umbilicus. Now, the umbilicus, or the umbilicus, is going to lie in the midline of the body, and can be a great reference tool just for a simple subdivision, and it will lie along the um, anterior, median, otherwise known as the mid-sternal line. So a mid-sagittal cut of the body should bisect the umbilicus. Another point of visual landmarks is going to be halfway along the clavicle, which is the mid-clavicular line. And typically, the mid-clavicular line is going to be along the lateral aspect of the six-pack muscles, our rectus abdominis. And the rectus abdominis will be subdivided by small lines known as tendinous intersections. So in a thin individual, if they flex, you'll be able to actually identify both the midline of the body, the tendinous intersections, and the muscular components of this muscle. And that midclavicular line can help you with orientation of structures internally inside the abdominal cavity when it's subdivided into nine abdominal regions. Now, if we were to continue inferior to the umbilicus, we will see the midline structure of the pubic symphysis where the right and left sides of the pubic bones come together. And this can also typically be felt in individuals. And there may be varying amounts of fat lying superficial to it, and it may not be the most comfortable for somebody to have palpated. Moving laterally from the pubic symphysis and the pubic tubercles to either side would be the attachment of the inguinal ligament which separates the abdominal cavity from the thigh. But at the lateral extent of the inguinal ligament, we can palpate the anterior superior iliac spine, part of our hip bone or the ilium. Moving from the ASIS superiorly and laterally, we can feel along our hip bone, which is the iliac crest. And the iliac crest is going to meet up with the mid-axillary line typically towards the most superior extent of this bone. Now, another couple of landmarks that we saw within the thoracic region can also help us with orientation here in the abdominal cavity. Again, the inferior extent of the sternum at the xiphoid process and the costal margin, which will descend as it moves laterally between the thoracic and abdominal cavities.